My name is Lukey Bolin. I'm filling in for Gary Mitchell, who's come down with a severe case of Bieber fever. But hopefully he'll be back next week. Until then, we've got a huge show for you tonight. We've got some big letters, including someone who's writing in about some things that are just plain un-Australian. We also have a letter from someone who has their marriage and job at risk over something that happened on Facebook. And lastly, well, one guy, two girls, I need not say any more. It's a huge episode. Stick around. You're watching Sweet and Sour. Problem big or small, would a miracle be nice? Our monthly crew is back, churning out advice. You might even laugh a bit in the following half hour. Park your backside on the couch, cause baby, it's time for Sweet and Sour. Right here on Sweet and Sour. Pour some sugar on me, baby. It's time for Sweet and Sour. Wow, such enthusiasm from the four spare staff here. That is fantastic. Welcome to Sweet and Sour. My name is Lukey Bolland, filling in for Gary Mitchell. And we have a, an amazing panel for you tonight. It's going to be a really fun show. Let's just introduce them. First up, Shane Haste from the world of professional wrestling. Now, Shane, something I've got to talk up first of all. This is big news. Mm. The Pro Wrestling Illustrated 500 recently came out. They list the 500 best wrestlers in the world. Mm -hmm. And you were one of the few Australians to crack the top 500. Where'd yep. you come in? Uh, 374. And we all know it all goes downhill from there. <laughs> it does. No, that's that's really impressive to be yeah. in the top 500 first wrestlers in the world. First time in there as well, so it's pretty good to skip that far ahead and your first time in it. That's true. You've, you've recently just got back from America doing some wrestling over there. Are you planning on heading back soon, though? Yeah, I should be back in the next few months. And whereabouts are you going to be heading next? Uh, you know, LA, Missouri, try to get everywhere, you know what I mean? Missouri. Yeah, you know. The wrestling <laughs> capital of the world, Missouri. Right in the heart of America. <laughs> sure. It's more wrestling with bears there and whatnot, but... Are you up to the challenge? Oh, we'll see. <laughs> next up, Courtney Murphy. Now, you've had just a huge few weeks, nay, few months here, leading up to the big album finally being released. Yes. How's it all been? Uh, crazy, actually, you know, because it's all independent and uh, the album's just come out on my own dime. Um, so everything's sort of taken so long to get there, but finally we're there and now the big uh, marketing campaign begins. Fantastic. And it's an amazing album. If people want to pick it up, where can they head to grab it? At the moment, just the website, uh, www.courtneymurphy.com.au. It's available. Uh, but we're getting distribution soon, so it should be in the stores. In the and next also, I, I saw the video clip for your first single from the album, uh, Salvation Jane, which was just an incredible. Like when you, you see a lot of the local, uh, you know, music video clips, they're not that impressive. Yeah, oh, cool, this one yeah. I thought was really cool, though. Awesome, which yeah. We, people we, can check it out online as well. YouTube, absolutely, or, or CourtneyMurphy.com.au. It's up there as well. Um, yeah, we, we went out to York and shot in this piano graveyard and dropped a piano off a crane. Uh, like 50 feet from the air. It was a phenomenal looking film clip. We all shot it on like one of those little still cameras that shoots at 25 frames a second. So it looks pretty mint. It's like really it. impressive. You've got to check it out. And uh, the lovely Sheridan here Hello. from the One Thing Music Quiz. Now, I'm a big fan of the One Thing Music Quiz. I've been along and played. And, and what I like about it is a lot of the pub quizzes, I go along and I feel like an idiot because I'm sitting around and they go, okay, next round's geography and history. And I'm like, ah. Uh, uh, unless there's questions about Gosnells in geography. I'm not going to do too well, but the one thing music quiz is just all music, it's which is all awesome. Music. Uh, occasionally I incorporate Gosnells, not often, but I, like I do. That. I do. I like to include. Uh, it's all music. Um, there's, uh, it's very interactive. Screens all around the venue with the videos and the music and the pictures, and it's really fun. You don't have to be a music buff to know the answers. And if people want to head along to the one thing, I can, they can hire you for private venues or they can go along can to the weekly hired. quizzes. I can Where can they get the details yes, for that? Yes, uh, website www.theonethingquiz.com. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And last but certainly not least, the Iron Man of Australian Wrestling, Indeed. David Storm. We're not going to get anything out of hand tonight. We've got two wrestlers on the panel, so if anyone gives us any attitude, things well, are going to get out of control. Unless Shane gives me attitude, or I give Shane attitude, then we might have a problem. That's what I want to say. Uh, and um, I'm actually glad you brought the PWA 500 up. Shane uh -huh. obviously made the list, and uh, I didn't, so... Thanks for bringing that up, Luke. <laughs> well, you were 501, though, I hear, in the top 500 in the world. <laughs> That's what I like to tell Just people. missed out. But you just did the, uh, the Explosive Pro Wrestling Telethon Bash. Absolutely. How did that go? Fantastic. Uh, one night tournament, uh, managed to raise some money for Telethon. Um, it's a great course. Absolutely. Um, 
I myself spent a fair bit of time in Princess Margaret as a kid, um, so a uh, cause I, I feel a lot of passion for, so really glad we had the chance to do it. Fantastic. We'll find out more about when the next EPW show is coming up in a second, but let's get into tonight's letters. Here's the first one. Dear panel, I was driving the other day and got flashed by a speed camera for going eight kilometres over the limit. It's bad enough getting a fine for barely passing the limit, but what makes it worse is that I passed about 100 cars who had clearly seen the speed camera and not one of them warned me it was approaching. Is it just me or is that pretty un-Australian? I mean, it's bad enough having the police merely raising revenue and finding every man and his dog, but when you don't have people warning you of an approaching speed camera, it's just plain wrong. What does this country come to? From here it's a downward spiral into people turning a blind eye when they see someone breaking into your house and ignoring cries for help in the street. What do you think needs to be done to solve this from Richard and Greenwood WA? Let's go straight to Shane Hayes. Shane, what do you think about all this? Is this un-Australian? Oh, I don't think so. I think, you know, what he's asking here is kind of two different things and he's asking people to flash their lights, but um, also if you have someone breaking into your house, he's breaking the law when he's speeding. So what he's asking people to do in the sense of flashing their lights is to stand out the front of the house he's breaking into and telling him the cops are coming lay low so I think uh, he's the un-Australian one here for speeding just stop speeding that'll solve your problem too you, you think that that un-Australian people uh, speed yep all right all right fair enough Courtney drink driving that's different <laughs> that's speeding. that's Australian <laughs> but uh, speeding Big. Different story. Courtney, what do you think about it? Look, I inherently have a problem with the term un-Australian. I think... Uh, you think the term's un-Australian? Uh, well, <laughs> I don't think un-Australian is, is a thing that we can use. I think, just say impolite, perhaps. You know, if you're going to be polite, let the guy know that the, the cops are around the corner, whatever. But you've got to admit, be. being impolite, very un-Australian. <laughs> if it's un-Australian, un what's Australian? What is Australian? Polite. We've got all this list of, yeah, polite. <laughs> <laughs> Flashing people? That no, sounds... look, I think it's a bigger, quest, uh, bigger picture question. I think, uh, yeah, we just want people to do unto others and all that sort of thing. If, if you would want someone to know, you'd flash them. Uh, you know, I think people are just losing that do unto others thing, the bigger picture. Just people are being more and more impolite toward others, I think. And we've got to, as a community and a culture, we've got to change that. I think that's that's a, a bigger question than I've got an answer for. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Sheridan, what do you make of all this? Uh, Richard, you're a buffoon. You're an idiot. Uh, <laughs> what do you think needs to be done to solve this? Stop freaking speeding, you idiot. <laughs> Honestly, I, I actually, I read this letter today and I got quite cross and I actually called up my local um, police station just to find out if in fact it is illegal to flash your lights um, and is at it? other motorists, it's illegal. Really? 100 bucks, one point for misuse of your high beams. And wow. so what, what Richard is asking us to do is to risk being fined 100 bucks, demerit point, just so he can escape a $50 fine. No <laughs> demerit points, you're an idiot. Richard. <laughs> Davis Storm, round it out. What do you, in closing, what do you think of all this? Well, he's brought up some interesting points, uh, has Richard. Um, I think, I, I kind of agree with Courtney that uh, the term un-Australian, I, I don't particularly care for it, but um, I think what's un-Australian is uh, using the term flashing in the sense of using your car lights. Uh, back in my day, being Australian meant uh, getting your uh, you memories out. That's... That's the term flashing in an Australian context, I think. So uh, there you go, Richard. Fantastic. Well, there you have it, flashing. Let's keep it for just showing your boobs. That's pretty much, uh, I think as an educated yeah. panel, we've come to a pretty good conclusion. Uh, that's the sort of great advice you can expect here on Sweet and Sour. And we're going to be back with more of it in just a moment. Welcome back to Sweet and Sour. We have got your letters to read out, but if you want it to be your letter on the show, all you've got to do is drop us an email to the address you see on your screen, letters at sweetandsour.net.au. And for every letter that we read out on the show, we'll give you a double pass along to the movie Matching Jack 
It's throwing Jacinda Barrett. It's that simple. We could hear a bit of Courtney under the uh, and then it under the email address there. Away, it's just, know? it's gone. Yeah. But it was, uh, that's part of the new album, which you can get online. CourtneyMurphy.com.au. Let's get into the next letter. Dear Sweet and Sour, I made a big mistake. I fell into the trap of the evil world of Facebook. Wasting endless hours of my life playing Farmville and poking friends isn't the bad part. What's bad is I made the mistake of friending some workmates. One of them had some suggestive near naked photos on his profile. I sent some comments about them I thought were funny and he responded in what I interpreted as a flirty way. Now I find out that he is outraged by my messages and has told me that if I don't give him a large sum of money, he will go to our boss and my husband and tell them that I've been stalking him and sexually harassing him online. I'm worried that what was intended as a bit of a laugh has spiraled into a situation that could cost me my job and worse yet, my husband. What should I do from Tammy in Taralgon, Victoria? Wow. It's a hell of a problem, Courtney. Yeah. What do you think? Oh, well, look, I've got so many people friended on my Facebook, but I've got to be careful what I say here, just in <laughs> case Tammy is one. Um, Tammy, uh, you're an idiot. Um, <laughs> Seriously, just, it's all about honesty once again. Like, you didn't do anything wrong. So come clean with the guy and just go, look, I think you misinterpreted what I said or whatever. Um, whether he's got a little bit of a problem with it, you can go to the boss and say, this guy's got a little bit of a problem with nothing at all. And uh, stop playing Farmville. Um, <laughs> get outside, it's a beautiful day. <laughs> go and do something with your life and uh, move on. Shane, what do you think? I think you could go another way here. Uh-oh. See, a uh, thing I call the uh, blackmail stalemate, where you get more involved into this, right? <laughs> and you get some stuff on him so that he's stuck and he can't blackmail you because you can blackmail him. And then it just kind of stays there and you just awkwardly look at each other every what time you see What if there is nothing? What if this guy is You make coin? something. You invent something If he's already it. into the, black uh, the blackmail game, you can maybe get some more pictures from him for some more of you. You gotta dive in deeper and take a risk. So what do you take think a about, risk. What do you think Tammy? about friending workmates? Do you think that's something you should do or something you should just avoid altogether? If they're hot, yes. That's good advice always. Uh, Davis Storm, what do you think of this? <sighs> it's, it's a tough one. And uh, sexual harassment, obviously, in the news at the moment, big news, David Jones. Uh, but I think what Tammy needs to do is see this through all the way to the end and actually start sexually harassing him because nobody is going to believe that a woman is being flirty with a fella and a fella thinks that he's being sexually harassed. He's loving it. All right, that's, that's, a, that's a pretty good call, actually. Sheridan, do you agree with that or you think it should take a different approach altogether? Well, look, Tammy, she's a silly duffer, essentially. The thing with Facebook is that you've got to exercise a bit of common sense, really. But the fact is this guy needs to be brought to task. He's blackmailing her. What he's doing is illegal. So in this order, Tammy, you need to tell your husband, just come clean. You haven't really done much. Then tell your boss, then tell the police. Make what this guy pay. He's what, if Tammy's, what if Tammy's played down her comments? What if she has been well, a little? That's the thing. I don't know what she said. I want to see the pictures. <laughs> Quite frankly. Well, I Bring for one on. do not. Uh, <laughs> but that's all right. Really? The police? Yeah, like, absolutely. If you went to the police he's, and said, "Look, I've got a problem with Facebook," from her. Then, yeah, are you the talking police. About, she's talking about the band, the police. Though. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's yeah, the logical solution. Yeah. I'm being I'm being harassed on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> We've got criminals to catch. See ya. Don't stand so close to me. Uh, <laughs> that's how the conversation would go in my well, head. Just uh, say she's a small boy and he's an older man. That'll take care of that pretty quickly. We just cut some dead air for a second then while Shane was talking. Uh, you can expect more of that. Uh, I think we've helped no one in this break. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. And surprisingly enough, we will be back with more Sweet and Sour after this. Welcome back to Sweet and Sour. I feel bad speaking over your song. This is... No, go ahead. I don't mind. <laughs> this, is, this is Courtney Murphy's new single, Salvation like Jane. I'm just going to sing over the top of you. <laughs> That's fine. It, it gives me a taste of my own medicine. And uh, we talked about, you can see the clip of that online. Uh, great video clip. Really good. 
and made in mate. WA. Yeah, yeah. In York, in fact. Cheap plug for York. <laughs> no, 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 you could have been at York. But uh, we're going to go into the next letter. Uh, <laughs> dear Mitch and Panel, I've been single for about two long, painful years. I've been going out on endless blind dates and trying every internet dating site I can but have no luck. That is until last week. I finally met a girl who is fun, attractive and likes the same stuff as me. The problem is that the day after our first date, I ran into a girl I used to have the biggest crush on in high school. We got talking and she asked me out. So we went out the next day and really hit it off. So now I have two girls who are both potentially the one. On our first date, I told them and was 100% honest that I was single. Since then though, I've started dating both of them and I'm able to make it work. Could this be my reward for being single for so long, having two amazing girls at once, or do I have to come clean from James in South Australia? Davis Storm, first up. Uh, what do you think? Can this guy keep going out with the two girls? James, I'm not sure you could have come to a worse bloke for advice. I've, <laughs> I've been with the same lady for 14 years now and have never had the problem of having two girls on the run at the same time. Um, but you did come to me for advice, so you're going to get some terrible advice. Uh, you asked whether or not that uh, this was your reward for being single for so long. Let me tell you, as a married man, your reward for being single for so long is being single for so long. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Once you get married, it's, it's all downhill. I love you, Shell. <laughs> yeah. Sheridan, we all do. What, what do you think? James, you, you've actually caught me um, in, in a fairly bad mood with guys at the moment. I've been done wrong. And um, no, this is not a reward. You must come clean because you're being deceitful, you're being dishonest, and you're being downright greedy. Um, <laughs> at some stage, these girls will find out about each other and you will lose both of them. James. But what if they don't? They will, we're but not what if, silly. I don't know, some of you. Now, that uh, would be a reward for being <laughs> single. No, so. no, make a decision. Just choose one over the other or, or, or just be single. But what if it's that situation, and I've, I, I haven't been in this position, unfortunately, but I've been in a, in a similar really? position where I've been, you know, having to decide between two girls, and that somehow, you know, it could be a really difficult, because if you haven't been dating him for long, you don't know who is the right one for you, so maybe is there a way he could tell them both and still keep dating him until he figures out which one he wants to be I with? I think your instinct should point to one over the other, really. But look, if you lose one, then tough luck. That's life. So what happened that got you so jaded? Do not I'm discuss this No, no, it, it, it seems like you said it caught you in a bad mood. No, I'm just curious. I, I'm, we, I'm we got cross. a panel with uh, guys here who are obviously, you know, very, no, very... No, I, I don't need advice, Lukey. I don't need the advice. I know wow. the situation. I'm just a little cross. I know that tone. Uh, <laughs> and that's the <laughs> yeah, answer you to move on to Shane. Well, <laughs> Shane? Well, what? really, it just depends how serious he is with both of them. I mean... Eventually, if he does keep going, he's just going to get bored of one anyway. So whichever one you get bored with first, <laughs> ditch that one and then stay with the other one for a little bit. And wow. then you'll want to be single again. So don't ever go serious. Just, just keep fooling around. Spoken <laughs> like a true gentleman. And then yeah. Ethan, just pull out the yearbook after, cross her face <laughs> off, look for the next one and keep going. Climb that ladder. Give it a go. Now something tells me you've been in this situation many times, Shane. No, never. Allegedly. Allegedly, yeah. There's no proof. I wow. deleted all them comments off my Facebook there was, page. There was a, a bit of face, uh, Facebook blackmailing going on yeah, you know at some I mean. stage. That's, we don't it, need to go works, into that. <laughs> Courtney. Well, okay. First of all, James. TV high five. <laughs> <laughs> well done, son. Um, <laughs> the first problem I've got is you met the girl from the high school the day you were going out on the first date with this girl and you're saying... I was being completely and 100% honest, I, you, you were single at the time. Well, you could have actually said there and then that, well, yes, I'm single, but I've got this date with this girl tonight. And that's, that's absolutely being honest about your situation and saying, look, yeah, I like this girl, but I really like you. I've always liked you since high school. I know this only too well. I had so many unrequited, you know, crushes in high school. <laughs> Tear. Um, <laughs> so at, at that time, I think you've kind of 
ruined it a little bit for yourself. You can come clean now and go, look, I should have said this a, a few weeks ago when I, when I met back up with you or whatever, but I've met this girl, but I like you as well. And I'm, what I would like to do is kind of just <laughs> go out on a few dates, nothing romantic or intimate, but just see where this is going, whether we've still got things in common. Um, you know, that kind of thing. What do you think? No, I want to date you now, Courtney. <laughs> oh, how's that? What's shocking me is we've got three guys here that have been asked for advice and not one of them has used the term threesome. <laughs> I, I'm really shocked, especially by you, Shane. Well, I mean, if he has the opportunity to get him drunk, <laughs> okay, now we go. Get him drunk, you know, maybe take them both out on a date to the same place, a bar, let's say, and date them at either end and just keep feeding them drinks and just, oh, look at this chick. She, I went to school with her. <laughs> happened to, uh, this is sounding like a bad episode of Hey Dad, Dad all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this has uh, gone down real quickly. Nice one, Nudge. Yeah. <laughs> no, look. It, it's the um, the biggest crush in high school. You never. I don't think you ever actually get over that biggest crush in high school. So yes, if you I do. Yeah, you nailed oh, really? You do. really, really. Oh, yes. Good. Oh, but how did you get over it? Did you actually? Oh, I grew up. See, there's okay. a story. The there. unrequited <laughs> crush. You never, never got to be with them. That that crush. Well, you know what I mean? W when you run into your old crush from high school, do you mm -hmm. prefer to run into them and see that they've they've gone downhill <laughs> or do you prefer no. to run into them and see that they're still that what you imagine the memory you don't want them to have gone downhill i mean if i ran into year 11 drama teacher miss john i wouldn't <laughs> want her to have deteriorated at all in my mind yeah. still perfection uh, that, that's definitely. exactly right but if he's met up with the girl and she's exactly like uh, she was in high school and still got a big crush that for me supersedes the new girl that i've just met because you've got this history with this girl and you go back to high school you know that that crush is just always going to be niggling at you. It's just a fling. What if? Just a, a what thing. if the new girl was Natalie Portman? <laughs> we need to look into this more. You know, they could, this new girl could be pretty uh, well, incredible then James too. James is inherently screwed. <laughs> Re reading between the lines, mm -hmm. I think James is what we like to refer to as a dirtbag. And uh, wow, I don't think because he's dating two girls at once, but because he, I think he understands the position he's in, and he's mm -hmm. not really being honest because. If you were being honest, James, you would tell the girls that you're dating somebody else yes. at the same time. No. So, yeah. um, I don't think no, either of them would stand for it either. There's a difference between being honest and withholding information. My favourite thing there is that all of us in unison go like, yeah, that makes sense. Great, great about it, James. No, no, he should keep lying and trying to have sex with two I never women. I said lie. I just said don't tell them things they don't need to know. Well, you that's also told different. them to take them both to a bar <laughs> and try and get them both drunk to swing them into a three. That was for a threesome, but you know. James, the longer you leave it, the worse it's going to get. So just deal with it right now. And, um, you know, if, if one of them says, look, I understand the situation and uh, I'd still want to carry this through, then she's kind of the one for you, I reckon. I can't imagine she'd do that. Really? No. If she was drunk. No. I think you should sit them both down and watch this show. Yeah. Just, there, just play for them and go, well, what do you think? Handle of experts. <laughs> That gives him no what, help. What would you uh, do, girls? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm leaning towards that Shane guy. He seemed really wise. Uh, Who wants another drink? <laughs> <laughs> Fill you up. On that uh, important note there, I think we've, we've solved enough people's problems. Mm. I think we can uh, take off our superhero costumes and move back to our everyday lives. I'm Spider-Man. Uh, Shane, you, uh, you're heading off to the US soon, uh, mm -hmm. but before then, People can catch you live uh, September 11, I believe, next Explosive Pro Wrestling show. Yes, uh -oh. definitely. Hopefully. <laughs> definitely, hopefully. Hopefully. You know, what can happen between then? <laughs> <laughs> Courtney. Yes. <laughs> People can get the album. People can get uh, see the video clip. Yes, on YouTube, and uh, people will buy the album. And uh, yeah, come along to a show. I've got a gig at the Ellington this Friday night. Actually, that won't be this Friday night. <laughs> no. No, we taped this back in 2004. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> well, I just want to... It's, uh, <laughs> just came third in fact. <laughs> no, no, it's... Uh, people can catch you live. All the dates yes. are on your website. Yes, exactly. And you got to get this out. I'm telling you, it's uh, an incredible CD. Please do, support local music. And by local music, we mean Courtney Murphy. Because uh, we could care less about other musical acts. They're not here. Just me. Share it on the One Thing Music Quiz. It's happening all around uh, Perth, but mm -hmm. people anywhere in Australia can, can hire your services. Absolutely. I am available for private functions, uh, but five venues around town at the moment uh, for music quizzing, a bit of fun, bring your friends along, have some dinner, quiz. And they can get the details on Facebook, on Twitter, or they'll go yes. to the website. Facebook, Twitter, go to the website. That's the best way, uh, theonethingquiz.com.
and the Iron Man of Australian wrestling, Davis Storm. Absolutely. You are. You've got the the show September 11. What's it called? Road to Glory, I believe. Road to Glory, which yeah. is the one of the last. Where you before. maybe possibly might be able to see Shane Haste. <laughs> you never know, but you will see David Storm. Absolutely. And Absolutely. Uh, that's that's one of the last stops before Reawakening, which is going to be the biggest show of the year. And hopefully we're going to see uh, maybe one of you guys going for the title. We'll see. Absolutely. We'll see. It's going to be a huge show. You can get all the details at epwperth.com. That's all the time we have for this week. My name's Lucky Bowen. Thanks for joining us here on Sweet and Sour. We'll see you next week.